I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the bitch to rest Put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick What's good, y'all? We back with another little episode tonight. I mean, last night was a crazy night. So I was about to go to sleep early last night. I was having a rough day. Uh, I was really tired, so I was about to go to sleep around like ten o'clock. Then we got news that um we got trade news right around that time, and it was back to back. The first news was the Rockets are finalizing a deal to send Robert Covington to Portland for Trevor Reza. The 16 overall pick in tomorrow's draft and the 2021 protected first round pick. And for me, that's that's what that Portland team has been needing for a long time. They've been searching for a wing for the longest time, a 3D wing for the longest time. And the fact that they finally got one for this team is now a little contender like that wing like Robert Covington people might not think he's that good but him with this team puts this team over the limit what they've been needing for the longest time it was either trade CJ for a wing or keep CJ for this wing because this is the only person that you can flip for like a first round pick and like like this like they did for Trevor Reza even though that's not that much but like Robert Covington impact is it's, it's, it's all star impact it's such thing having an all star impact. You don't have to be a, you don't have to be an all star, but it's such thing having an all star impact. Like Robert Covington has all star impact. Marcus Smart has all star impact. Even though Draymond Green was an all star a couple times, probably not no more. He has all star impact. There's a lot of players that have an all star impact. And Robert Covington is one of those players. This team always need a wing that can shoot, can play D, can stick to Kevin Durant, to LeBron's, the Kawhi. That's in the uh, Western Conference. They never had nobody that can do that. They had Al Farouk and Minu, um and Mo Harkless, they're okay, but Robert Covington is better than both of them combined. No offense to them. Robert Covington defense is elite. He can play, he can guard one through five. You add that to this team who just made the Western Conference Finals last year, not this year, and I'll give them some slack because they were kind of hurt the whole season. Um, then the virus came around, so that stopped it. They came back. They looked good. They made it to the playoffs, but... Dame got hurt in the playoffs. Not saying they would have beat the Lakers, but it, it, they, they had a bad season. But you have Robert Covington to this, to this team, and then they found a little hidden gem and um, Gary Trent Jr. It sucks that they had to give up that first round pick because I feel like that could have been very useful. But, like, you you had to get that up. And you got a championship-level piece right here for your team. This kind of make to them, this kind of makes them a low-key contender. I feel like Dame... He's not going to carry this team. And Dame is that type of player where if you got this one player, he's a superstar. He's one of the superstars in this league. If you have a superstar, you're going to go to the playoffs. And it's a chance that you're going to go far in the playoffs. He's he's not a player that, that shies away from the playoff moment. He's not a player that doesn't come up in the playoffs. And then if he does, you got CJ who's always right there. Like, there's been times that Dame doesn't do good in the playoffs. Like, Dame had the whole Oklahoma series. Oklahoma, uh... City Series last year. He had the whole series. He dominated that whole series. The next series, you might think Dame dominated. No, CJ dominated that whole series and closed it out in Game 7 with a game-winning shot and a game-winning block. So they, they do that a lot. Where they they can be on and off, and if one if one falls off, the other one's right there. And then you got Nurk, who a lot of people think is a top five center. I say, like, top seven, who has a lot of talent. Like, he has all-star level talent. He was only 25, so he's... And he, it sucks that he couldn't play the whole last season, but like, it's only 25, so he can still make the All Star game. Like I say, he has All Star talent, can play me, run the floor, play decent defense, create, create for his own in the post. But sometimes he be getting killed on defense. I ain't gonna lie, but like, he's a he's a decent defender. Um, like I said, he can pass. He he's like all around. He's an all around center. He's one of those centers that can do everything, but is not great at anything. And that's no knock to him, but that's just what he is. Like, he has some great games. Oh, he had one game where he had 25 points, 20 rebounds, 5 blocks, and 5 assists. That's like that's called a 4x4 four four where you got 5 plus on a stat. So, that, that was an amazing game by him. I think he had one of those games this, this season. In a bubble, he had like 20 and 25. And again, 
don't think he had the five points. I mean, five assists, five blocks. But, like, he has all-star talent. He's really good. Then you add Robert Covington, person that can shoot, can sometimes create for his own, a great defender, great team player. And is you put him at the three or the four, y'all good. And they talking about getting Rodney Hood back. I don't know if that's the right person to get, but if you get Rodney Hood, that, that's cool. Put him at the three. Gay Trent, Anthony Simons, Nasir Little on the bench. You got Zach Collins. You probably want to go sign a vet, a vet and a free agency for that bench because you're not really going to have no vets in that bench. But I don't know. This That team, that trade, to me, made them a championship contender. And when I was looking at the standings yesterday, it's it's, it's hella teams in the, in, the, in the playoffs right now. And like I said in my video yesterday, the Suns are a definite uh, uh, playoff team. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know. You got Lakers, Clippers, Denver. The Rockets are out, so I'm not going to count them. OKC might be out. Then you got Utah, Dallas, Portland, Memphis, Phoenix, uh, San Antonio, Sacramento, New Orleans, Minnesota, and Golden State. I don't know how much. I don't know how much. I think I just counted 13 teams. This is going to be a deep. Deep West. This is the deepest I've ever seen it with teams that can make the playoff. It's deep. So, I see this Blazers team going, but I got to retract my statement from yesterday where I say it's automatic that the Suns making the playoffs. <laughs> Sorry. I just don't know. It's, it's, it's too deep. Now that I realize it's, it's, it's hecka deep. But... That was just the start of the trade madness yesterday. Then literally two minutes after that trade came out, it came out with a report that said, let me find a report. Came out with a report that said, um, New Orleans is nearing a completion of a deal to send Drew Holiday to Milwaukee for Eric Bussell, George Hill, and was described as a significant draft compensation. So when I seen that draft conversation, I was like, what does that mean? Literally a minute after that, he said, Bucks are finalizing, finalizing a package that includes future three future first round picks in a deal to the Pelicans. So I was thinking like, yo, first of all, I didn't even think about the Drew Holiday on the Bucks fit. But I was thinking like, yo, they really sent three first round picks to them. And then two minutes later after that, they said they sent two first round pick swaps with them. So that's five first round picks for Drew Holiday. God damn. Drew Holiday my man, but that's the same thing y'all got for Anthony Davis. They got two two young players and then we gave them like six, seven picks. I don't know. We gave them hella picks for Anthony Davis. So they, they finessed that. But I don't think this is finessed. I think both teams won out of this. Like I said with this Ricky Rubio thing yesterday, Ricky Rubio is not a player that fits that timeline. Like the Suns, they're a young team. I mean, the Thunder, they're a young team, so they're probably going to flip Ricky Rubio. This Pelicans team's a young team, so they're going to flip Eric Bledsoe and Grant Hill, George Hill. Even though they might keep George Hill to be a bag of point guard, but I think they're going to flip both of them. And they, they are two people that have decent trade value. I think George Hill has better trade value than um, Eric Bledsoe, but two players that have great trade value. I hope they don't last on this team for a long time, because George Hill next to Lonzo and Zion is, is disgusting. It's disgusting. So I hope they don't I hope they don't last on this team for a long time. I hope they can find a way to trade them. I wish they would have added like a third team in that trade so they can get George Hill out. I mean, get uh, Eric Blusso out of here. I just, like, put him on a team with shooters. Don't put him on that team. That team, like, that team's nasty. <laughs> but, um... The fact that they got five first round picks out of that is amazing. I don't know if they got uh, the Bucks first round pick from tomorrow's draft, but they did. They should have. They should have just to add to the depth, the young depth that they got. So I feel like that's a win for the Pelicans, but it's it's, it's most definitely a win for the Bucks, and not only the Bucks, it's most definitely a win for Giannis. Giannis is a player that needs a player at the end of the game who can create in the half court, can assist, can play defense alongside with him. And can shoot the ball. Drew Holiday is all of those. Drew Holiday is one of those players that I feel like is an elite at both sides of the ball. Uh, offense and defense. 
can guard one through four on offense, and I've seen him do it plenty of times. I've seen him guard LeBron, Kristoff, AD, so he can guard one through four, and he's a player that's also in the offense can create for his own. His offense, his ISO game is nasty. That gather step back he do is 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 so nasty, and. The, the time where he made the All Star game, he was a point guard. When you going, when he's going to the bus, he's going back to playing a point guard because of a trade that they made right after that. That I'll say, but like this, this fits so perfectly with them because Drew Holiday is not no person that's inconsistent in the playoffs like Chris Middleton can be, like Giannis can be. Drew Holiday had one year, and I know I just said Dame doesn't have a year where he does bad in the playoffs. Drew Holiday locked him the fuck up. <laughs> he locked him and CJ McCollum up a couple years ago, and they swept the Portland Trailblazers. And then in Game Four, Drew Holiday dropped forty while locking Dame up. It 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 was amazing to watch, and that like that for me, that's when I realized how good he was. But still, nobody realized that Drew Holiday is that guy. That's why he's getting paid twenty eight million, and putting him next to Giannis is is what he needed. You don't need, I, I'm sorry, I, everybody's so cool, but like, bro, dude was shooting 26% in the playoffs, and that's just, that's not three-point, that's field goal, that's everything, shooting 26% last year, and it, this year was terrible too, and it's, it's, it's like, yo, he cannot create for himself, he don't deserve, he, I mean, I'm not gonna say he don't deserve to be on the scene, he should not be on the scene, because that, that, that held them back a lot. That's why they got fur by the uh the heat. Because he could not create for his own. Giannis just had to do it all by himself. But then when they trapped Giannis, locked up Giannis, Chris Middleton was on and off. So when he was on and off, who do they look to? Nobody. Well, they're gonna have Drew Holiday to look to. That's a person that's also elite on the offensive side. With along with those two, Chris Middleton and Giannis. So I feel like that's a great pick. And then literally, literally like 10 minutes at like 10, 15 minutes after that, they also made another trade. I was oh I was like oh I was like, I was like when they made that Drew Holiday trade, I was like the great thing was they kept Dante DiVincenzo, a person that can shoot the ball, play good defense, and doesn't really need the ball. Uh, that's wrong. <laughs> Cause 10 minutes after that, they traded Dante, Ersan Eliasova, DJ Wilson for Bogdan Bogdanovic. That that right there made them. That right there kept Giannis to me. That kept Giannis for me. That that for that right there made them keep Giannis. Giannis met with them a couple weeks ago, and then he came out with a report uh, a couple days ago that said, "I don't know if I'm." He didn't. I'm paraphrasing basically. He said, "I don't know. We'll see what the what my, what my team does. I'm, I I want to win the championship. So if they if they um find a way to give me players and win the championship, then I'll stay. But." If not, I don't know if future holds with a whole sound like that. Well, this shows right here that the Bucks are willing to do anything to keep Giannis. They traded five first round picks along with Eric Blusso and Grant Hill, George Hill for Drew Holiday. Then they traded Dante, Ursan, DJ. DJ and Ursan really didn't play, so that's nothing. But Dante is like a very important piece of the team for Bogdan, who was far better. Far better. Bogdan is one of those special talents that gets overlooked because he plays on the Kings. Uh, along with De'Aaron Fox. And, well, just De'Aaron Fox. But they get overlooked because they play on the Kings. Well, Bogdan is a player that's so slept on. A player that's, his offensive of game is so deep. He's, I don't want to, I don't want to make that comparison, but like, he's a player that can play me at a, play me at a great level. Off the pick and roll, that Giannis, him and Giannis pick and roll is going to be amazing. You'll see him and Giannis pick and roll is going to be amazing. Um, his, he can shoot the ball. He doesn't need the ball. He can play all ball. Is a perfect person you need for this team that can play on ball or off ball. And can control the game at the end of the game. Hits the clutch shots. He, he's a great player. That's why I want to know what they signed him for. Cause I hope we, I hope it's like 16 million, so they still got some wiggle room to get some bench depth. Cause they, they bench gonna be trash if they if they sign up for like 20. But I hope they sign up for a little bit because it was a sign and trade. So at the end of the day, the Bucks gave him that contract, and the Sacramento Kings were okay with that, and they traded him. To me, I feel like the Sacramento Kings got robbed out of this. You get you get DJ, you get Ursan, but like Dante. Dante's, don't get me wrong, Dante's cool, but
but Bondon nice as fuck. Not Bondon is nice as hell. And th that was basically a flip, basically. That's what it was. Basically a flip. Because they didn't put no trade. They didn't put no, um, they didn't put no picks behind it. And Ursan DJ, they, they don't really play. Ursan was great for this team, but for that, for that, uh, for that Sacramento Kings team, he's going to be terrible. Because, like, all he really does is shoot. And I'm not disrespecting his game. He shoots and draw charges. But, this, this, I wish they would have kept him, to, to, to be honest. Like, that's a person they need. But, I don't, he don't, he's like a person that's only belongs on a contender, not a team that's rebuilding. And the second one, the Kings are definitely rebuilding. DJ Wilson never really got playing time throughout his whole career. So, uh, hopefully they give him some playing time over there. But, like, you never really seen nothing from him. So, that's why I said this was basically a flip. It was only D Dante for uh, Bogdan. And I feel like they got robbed, like. Sacramento Kings, you should have asked for a first round pick. That yo, Bogdan, nice as hell. And to me, I seen a report that they were looking at Bogdan. But when I seen it, I was like, yo, the Sacramento Kings value Bogdan a lot. Like they about to trade Buddy Hill because Buddy just said he wants out. He want to go to Dallas. They about to trade Buddy Hill, and you might as well keep Bogdan. But they just flipped him for Dante. I'm like. I don't know, I don't know, because B Bogdan could do so much, and not saying that Dante can, but like, uh, I feel like Bogdan's way better, I feel like if that was, it's basically a flip, I feel like they got robbed, they could have asked for a first, they definitely could have asked for a first, but I don't know man, I, I just feel like that Drew Holiday, Bogdan, Chris Middleton, Giannis, Brooke Lopez starting lineup, that, that shit is nasty. That shit is nasty. We hearing all this noise about James Harden getting traded to the Nets. I would still pick this team over that. I, I definitely would. And that's not even biased because my favorite players over there. But, like, I just feel like that's that's not going to work. Three ball hogs on one team. Three all-time scores on one team. That's not going to work. It's, it's either not going to work or they're going to mess all together and they're going to prove us wrong. But I don't, I don't see that happening. Because it's, it's three all-time scores and it's also three people with some terrible weird attitudes like you've seen a report james harden basically told them like yo get me out of here train me to brooklyn if this is not your best offer i don't really give a fuck just train me to brooklyn if, if they ask him for nicholas claxton just train me for him i don't care He's like basically saying look what i did for y'all like that's some selfish shit like i'll be mad as fuck like how you going we we helped you do this we gave you the opportunity to run the team through your little ass <laughs> i would be mad if they like they, that's basically what they said he walked up there and said he's like no matter what the conversation is for me train me i don't care so that that's crazy like he like that's wild that's wild that's really wild. I, I was like, yo, who does he think he is when I seen that? Like, that's wild. You really told them, <laughs> no matter what the offer is, I don't care if it's terrible or if it's not your best offer, trade me. That's wild. That's wild. Hey, but this Milwaukee team, that Milwaukee team, that shit, that shit nasty. <laughs> that, hey, December 22nd is going to be a great day. Put that Milwaukee team versus the Heat. I bet they fur the Heat. I bet they kill the Heat. I bet they kill you, but yeah. Hopefully Giannis come back with at least a three or a post a post game, so he won't so he won't get locked up. Cause that nigga, I mean, he got locked up in the playoffs. But like I said, every trade, well, every big trade, come back with another video. I feel like these are the two biggest trades so far. Even though the Chris Paul trade was there yesterday, I feel like that just puts them into the playoffs where they were almost there. But then I looked at it, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like 13 teams that can make the playoff. So, I don't know. I feel like these two trades just help Giannis and these Buc this Bucks team be a real contender. Because you'll see them, they'll have a great record through the regular season and get shitted on in all uh, playoffs. But I think this makes them a real contender. And I think this makes the Portland Trailblazers a little step by a contender. Depends on how Dame and CJ play. They, they got to go crazy like they did a couple years ago. But that's it. Hopefully, we get some more trades. The offseason is here. Draft is here. I might do a draft episode. I'm definitely doing a draft episode. Draft comes on tomorrow. So, see y'all later.